Ariana Fitz was last seen February the 1st, 2016. Ariana Fitz was reported missing from the San Francisco, California area on April the 5th, 2016. She was last seen in Oakland, California. Ariana's mother, Nicole, was found murdered and buried in a public park in San Francisco. It is believed that Ariana was not with her mother when she was killed. She was last seen in Oakland, California in January or February of 2016. On April the 8th, 2016, Ariana's mother, Nicole Fitz, was found murdered and buried in a public park. It has been seven years since the body of a young mother was discovered in McLaren Park, and authorities still believe that her daughter, who was two years old at the time, is still alive and perhaps somewhere in California. The April 2016 death of 32-year-old Nicole Fitz was tragic and shocking. It was made all the more shocking because of the disappearance of her toddler daughter, Ariana. Suspicion regarding both the murder and the child's disappearance immediately fell on the girl's babysitter and her husband, with whom Fitz was allegedly involved in some kind of conflict just before she was killed. Police still have never made an arrest, and despite there being a $250,000 reward out there for information about the girl's whereabouts, the case remains unsolved. Ariana would now be nine years old, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has put out a new composite, composite rendering of what she may look like. No one has seen or heard from the girl in seven years, and she's likely living under a new name. Fitz was a single mother and working at the Best Buy on Harrison Street just before her death. She was allegedly wearing a blue Best Buy shirt on April the 1st when she left to go to work. Um, she met with her babysitter, who was identified as Helena Martin. Helena and her husband, Devin Martin, lived on Castro Street in Oakland. Ariana had been living with the Martins, sleeping there nightly for about a month at the time of Fitz's death, an arrangement she made while she got back on her feet financially. Fitz would be found dead a week later after she went missing on April the 8th, her body buried in a shallow grave behind some bushes in McLaren Park, and covered with a plywood board. Her family had reported both her and Ariana missing on April the 5th. A friend of Fitz with whom she had been staying, Cheryl Taylor, said at the time that she immediately suspected the Martins, and that was who Nicole was going to meet on April the 1st before she disappeared. As far as I know, she was going to Oakland, and I told her before she left, whatever you do, get the police involved because Nicole was very upset that night. I said, I've had a long day. I wish I could stay up and talk to you a while longer, but I'm beat, and I'm going to bed, and that was the last time that I spoke with her. No arrests have been made. The San Francisco Police Department and the FBI say they may be getting closer, but they still need information. We don't consider this a cold case, said FBI agent Catherine Sackle, this is a very active investigation. Fitz's sister, Contessa, says in a video that she will do whatever it takes to bring Ariana home and bring her killer, her sister's killer, to justice. So, where are these Martins? Whatever became of them? Is it suspected that they wanted custody of this little girl, then wanted the little child for themselves? Or is it suspected that they killed the mother and maybe the child saw this so they did something to the child or was the child a, a victim of trafficking? Was she sold? Hopefully the child is still alive and hopefully someone does have her and she's safe. It would be a miracle if that were true. This is from 
March the 16th of 2023. Approaching the seventh anniversary of the disappearance, authorities put out new calls for the whereabouts of Ariana Fitz. It's been almost seven years since the body of a young mother was discovered in McLaren Park, and authorities still believe that her daughter, who was two years old at the time, is still alive and somewhere in California. The April 2016 death of 32-year-old Nicole Fitz was tragic and shocking at the time, but made all the more shocking because of the disappearance of her toddler daughter, Ariana. Suspicion regarding both the murder and the child's disappearance immediately fell on the girl's babysitter and her husband. Police still never made an arrest, and despite a $250,000 reward, the girl's whereabouts remain unsolved. Ariana Fitz would now be nine years old, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has put out a new composite rendering of what she might look like now. Fitz was a single mother and was working at the Best Buy just before her death. In fact, she was allegedly wearing a blue Best Buy shirt when she left work to go meet with the babysitter, who was later identified as Helena Martin. Helena and her husband, Devin, lived on Castro Street in Oakland. Ariana had been living with them, sleeping there nightly for about a month. This was due to an arrangement the mother had made until she was able to get on her feet financially. But investigators and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children believe Ariana may still be alive. It's very possible they may have sold this child to someone for either, um, you know, horrible reasons or maybe someone wanted a baby and couldn't have one of their own. Ariana is described as a black female with brown eyes and black hair. At the time of her disappearance, she was only two years old. She would now be nine. She was last seen in Oakland, California around February of 2016. It's possible that the reason the mother was going there at the 1st of April to confront these people was because they had had the baby since January or February and she had been asking to come get her or to at least come and be able to see her, they may have already have uh, sold the child at that point or done something else with the child. And the reason that they ended up killing the mother was because they knew that she was going to go to the police uh, when the mother called and said, these people won't turn my child back over to me. Three people were suspects in this investigation. Um, two of those people were tracked down and interviewed and spoken to. We also met with Nicole's two sisters who visited the shallow grave where their sister's body was dumped. It's heartbreaking and unbelievable, said one of her sisters. I don't know how anyone could do this to her. Park workers found Nicole's body stuffed into a shallow grave it curled into the fetal position. She was concealed under a large piece of plywood with gray and white spray paint. I had no idea it would be so close to people. It's, it's just awful. The sisters told KTVU that Nicole was a generous and loving mother to her two-year-old daughter who had disappeared. No one had seen the child since early February. Friends say Hearn gave Ariana to her sister, Helena Martin, and her husband, Devin, who lived in Oakland. Nicole's roommate said, has said the Martins wouldn't allow Nicole to see her daughter in the weeks leading up to her death. KTVU caught up with the Martins Tuesday afternoon as they left their apartment. Reporters tried to talk to, talk to them as they scrambled to their car with two young children in tow. 
asking the question, we understand Ariana was last seen with you, is that correct? The Martins refuse to talk and police say they have not cooperated. Why would these people not be forthcoming with everyone and just tell the police what they knew about this if they had nothing to hide? We're making the, assump we're making the assumption that these were the last two people to have contact with the child, and we don't know that to be the case. While the Martins and Hearn haven't been named as suspects officially, Helena told a neighbor she's being targeted unfairly because she has a criminal record. Helena Martin served six years in prison for killing the father of her child. Meanwhile, the Fitz family held a funeral for Nicole in Marina del Rey, California. They scattered her ashes at sea. She leaves behind another daughter, 12-year-old Cindy, who is staying with family in Southern California. Uh, anyone with any information is asked to contact the San Francisco Police Department. They said that the Martins, the husband and wife, had moved to Las Vegas and that the family had put up a billboard in the Las Vegas area so that they would see it and be reminded. So it's my understanding, just to break this story down, this, this Hearn was the sister to uh, Helena Martin. And Hearn, I don't know how she knew Nicole Fitz, if they had been friends for a really long time. I'm not here to judge anybody, but her, she seemed to have several sisters, this Nicole Fitz. I, I can't understand why the family didn't have the daughter, why they were not babysitting for her. If she was having such a rough time financially, or did she even ask them? Maybe she didn't want to go to her family for some reason. Search for a missing girl leads to Las Vegas. The aunt clings to hope for her niece. It's been six years since Contessa Fitz has last seen her niece, Ariana. I absolutely believe she is alive. I believe that she was taken because someone wanted her. There's a nationwide search for the child and also for her mother's killer. San Francisco police are working to solve the murder while the FBI works to find the missing child. We don't believe that the child was with Nicole at the time of her death, but we do believe the two cases are related, said an FBI spokesperson in the San Francisco office. Nicole Fitz was a single mom living in the San Francisco Bay Area. Her sister says she was struggling to make ends meet and she had been living with a self-proclaimed street pastor named Lima Sonny Briggs. She was paying rent for Briggs and given babysitting money, but she was being treated very verbally abusive and decided to leave. It was really bad, says her sister. She says Nicole had crashed with some friends and sometimes even slept at the Best Buy where she worked. She had found a new babysitter who was related to this Briggs person, a couple named Helena and Devin Martin. So basically what she said was this person she had been living with and paying rent to, who was being very verbally abusive to her, was also related to this these suspects in this you know, disappearance of this child and probably her murder as well. But they were not speaking to each other, so she thought that it would be okay for her to kind of be, become friends with them and let them help take care of her child. Nicole was focusing on her plan to find a stable home and daycare for her child. She eventually found a new apartment with roommates. She bought a crib, and she had furniture for Ariana. But Contessa said the babysitter would not return the child to Nicole. When things, well, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I don't know the circumstances here, but 
Why would she not have called the police right away? She was very uh, frustrated, says her sister. Contessa claims the last time she saw Ariana was February of 2016 in Santa Cruz. The last time I saw Nicole was around April the 1st. A close friend and co-worker, Michael Jacobo, said he dropped her off at her home. For a long time, for at least four weeks, she was talking about bringing Ariana back home, he said. Her roommate, E.J. Dalton, said she left shortly after arriving home. There was a text sent from Nicole's phone saying that she was in Fresno and that she was with a friend named Sam, but no one had ever heard of this person. This was probably the killer on her phone sending these messages. I've said this before, and I, uh, we've seen this before in other stories. If someone will kidnap someone or murder them. They will send messages from that person's phone, pretending to be them, and giving some story about how they're going to run off with some new person, or they just want to be left alone. And then there was a Facebook post saying, With my three-year-old, I needed this break. The family knew that this was not Nicole, not Nicole posting this because Ariana was only two years old. And because of the bad grammar and spelling. She said the search for Ariana began immediately with help from family, friends, and people from the neighborhood but the babysitters were remaining tight-lipped and refused to cooperate. There were just a lot of missing pieces, said her sister. One of the babysitters immediately hired an attorney and refused to answer phone calls. They are, they are the last persons to know her whereabouts, according to the police. Now six years have passed, and all three babysitters have relocated to Las Vegas. According to the FBI, they cannot speak on specific individuals in the case due to the policy of an ongoing investigation. But the family absolutely believes that the Martins and Hearn were involved in the murder of their sister and the kidnapping of the child. Ariana would now be eight years old. I do hope that, and I do believe that one day, out of the blue, we're going to get a phone call where she just shows up. I tried talking with the attorney representing Helena Martin, but they said that they could not speak due to attorney-client privilege. And that's basically it. There is a tip line, a 24-hour tip line, for the San Francisco Police Department at 1-415-575-4444. Or you can text a tip to TIP411 and direct the message to the San Francisco PD. You may remain anonymous. Basically, that was everything I could find on this case. My own thoughts on this case is that this woman was going through a rough time, and I don't know what her her situation was with her own family. And I'm not judging them. I'm just asking the question, why? Because we we think in terms of if you have a small child, you want to leave them with someone trustworthy. You typically would leave them with a family member, but sometimes that's not the case because sometimes family members may have a live-in boyfriend or something like that that people just don't trust. I don't know what the situation is here, but... They're, they're focusing mostly on these Martins and this Hearn woman. There were some co-workers and roommates who did have contact with her shortly before she was murdered. 
I don't know if they've been investigated. I don't know if they've been brought in for questioning. And um, that's pretty much where this case stands. And I do hope that one day the sister is right and that the child does turn up. The thing about that is the child was only two years old. She probably has very little to zero memory of of her time as a as a baby. Her name has probably been changed. She's probably been moved out of state. Maybe sold. This could be child trafficking. This be, could be an illegal adoption arrangement. And it's possible that the family that may have bought the child or adopted the child, if you want to call it that, maybe they don't even know the, the truth about who the child belonged to. These people may have passed her off as their own child and and just, you know, got involved in some kind of illegal adoption. Thanks for watching.